Hey guys, today we're going to be addressing a theme that is relevant for chess players of many levels, and that is how to calculate better. And for that, we're going to be using an example from one of Vasily Smyslov's games, in particular, a variation from that game, not what actually happened. So he was playing Karol Opachensky, 1946, and he'd sacrificed a pawn with the white pieces and he has some open files for his rooks, knights in the center, but black also has quite nice presence in the center with the pawns and the minor pieces are centralized as well. So it's a very um, unbalanced but balanced position in a way as well. Both sides have their strengths and weaknesses. So Opachensky decided with the ambitious move h5, pushing the pawn and trying to open up a file for the rook by going h four next. Very natural idea, and in fact, I had some students who also thought of that. And in the game, Smyslov played his knight to f4. Makes a lot of sense, but I had one student who decided to put the knight here, and black just kept going. They didn't really pay too much attention to this knight move, and they just kept going with h4. And so this is the position that we want to take a closer look at. Because I would say that a lot of my students feel quite adrift in this position. And it is pretty complicated. The first thing I think is that people tend to get very afraid about the events on the H file, right? The fact that black is trying to open up a file there, that they've got their rook lined up with our king. It definitely looks menacing. And people start thinking about defensive moves to try to uh, get rid of that threat so they can think about things like moving in their queen, which it might look also kind of active or maybe even pushing the pawn, right? But what people forget to do is actually to go back to the basics of chess calculation. How is it done? I mean, do we defend just because we're being attacked or do we still follow the rules of the thinking process that tell us that the first step to finding moves in chess is to look for checks, captures, and threats, right? It's, the first step is not make defensive moves. The first step is to find your own attacking ideas. Now, you have various checks in this position, you have various captures, and let's not forget that Black's King is still in the center, right? That's always a possible source of vulnerability. So White has Captures on b7, captures on f5, um, capture here, which, you know, not particularly good. Maybe an attack on the black queen with the knight from b5, right? So definitely lots of attacking things to look for for white. And so the problem is, the first problem is that people just tend to not even look in that direction because they're so busy trying to defend against black's obvious play on the h file. But in reality, we should take a look at a move like rook f5. So why is that move a natural candidate? Well, the knight, first of all, is just a very powerful piece for black, right? And so he defends the d6 pawn, he attacks the g3 pawn. Um, it definitely makes sense to consider eliminating him. And plus, when you make a move like that, you know what your opponent has to do. So he has got one capture. And this is where white now has a choice because there is a very tempting attack with the knight, a double attack on the queen and pawn, and you're actually gonna win that pawn with a check. So that might be the first thing to look at because you are really guaranteed to win material. Um, but when you look closer at that line and you do wind up taking the pawn with one of the knights, you realize it's not actually the end of the world for black. His king and f8 is pretty safe. He's still up material. He's up that exchange that you sacrificed. Your knight on e4 is under attack. He can't really move easily because there's also this knight. And then there's that threat still lingering in the position. So basically, this is not the way to go for white. But fortunately for white, they have a different option in this position. That is knight d5. So yeah, not trying to win a pawn, but plopping their knight on a very aggressive square in the center of the board 
The Black Queen is an incredible danger. There's a lot of places that she just can't go to like C8 or D7 because they're going to be forks by the white knights, either from this square or this square. So the only move is queen d8. And then, again, instead of moving this knight away, just because it's attacked, we look for our attacking moves. And we bring in another piece into the game. And now the black queen is in big trouble again. And black must do a move like that. Now, of course, you can already feel, I think for an experienced player, it's, um, it's quite evident that things are going badly for black's king. By the, you know, by the time they have to be giving away this pawn, letting the white knight capture it with check, running into the center of the board with their king, and still being in a discovery relationship here on the diagonal, um, you know, it definitely has a very dangerous feel to it. Now, white does have to be somewhat precise to finish this off. I wouldn't say, you know, the win is trivial, but white has a nice idea with this move. And that opens up an attack on the queen, but also allows us to play our queen to h5 next. And that is a very powerful way of bringing in our queen. And then we're going to be having a check on f6. And yeah, white is doing really well. So let's just go back for a second, guys, and review the right way to approach um, any kind of position, but certainly a position that has lots of open files, um, lots of contact between your pieces and theirs, kings that are a bit insecure, um, where there's lots of captures as well, right? You really got to make your list of forcing moves. So checks, captures, and threats. And before you start going completely on the defensive, you know, make sure that um, you don't have some aggressive options of your own, right? Because there are clues, there are definitely clues in this position that white has tactical ideas. Like, you know, the beautiful knight in the center of the board that is uh, hitting um, the d6 pawn, right? Like the rook on the open file, on the f file, the other rook, the possible weakness of this square on d6, right? There's, you know, the king in the center even, right? All these elements that you don't want to be oblivious to. And they tend to signal that there are tactical opportunities in the position. So if you want to find your tactical opportunities, guys, make sure that you are prioritizing checks, captures, and threats in your calculations, no matter what the situation, even if you feel that you're getting attacked, you're seeing some looming problems before you go on the retreat and decide that that's all the best you can do. Look at your forcing moves and maybe you're going to find some better options.